This video will help you understand meters and measurement by guiding you through a hands-on experiment using your multimeter and your electronics lab kit. As you watch this presentation, you can stop and go back to any part you wish to repeat. This lab is designed to be compatible with the electronics learning lab from RadioShack, or you may do this lab with a protoboard such as this one. Protoboards are also sometimes called breadboards. Yours may look a little different. Most any style of protoboard will work well. The electronic parts for these experiments include a quantity of two 1K resistors which have a color code of brown, black, red, gold. You will also need a quantity of two 10K ohm resistors which have a color code of brown, black, orange, gold. Remember, 10K is the same as 10,000. The color code for 10K resistors is brown, black, orange, gold. Brown is 1, black is 0. The third band is orange for 3, which means 10 raised to the third power. 10 times 10 times 10, which is equal to 1,000. These resistors are 10 times 1,000, or 10,000 ohms. The last band is called the tolerance band. Most resistors today have a gold tolerance band, which means 5%. The value 5% is multiplied by 10,000 to give 500, so this resistor is guaranteed to be between 9,500 and 10,500 ohms. You also need a source of 6 volts. A 6 volt lantern battery is a good source of direct current for experiments. You can also connect four 1.5 volt batteries in series to get 6 volts. The Learning Lab kit has six 1.5 volt batteries connected in series, giving a total of 9 volts. Notice how by tapping into different places in the battery bank you can get 1.5, 3, 4.5, 6, 7.5, or 9 volts. Instead of batteries, you can also use a variable power supply similar to this one. You will need some jumper wires. A jumper wire assortment like this is convenient, but not necessary. You can also cut pieces of wire off a roll of 22 or 24 gauge hookup wire. A good and cheap source of hookup wire is twisted pair network wire such as category 5 or 6 ethernet cable or telephone wire. To make jumpers you will need a wire stripper. An ammeter measures current flow. A voltmeter measures voltage or potential difference between two points. And an ohmmeter measures resistance. A multimeter combines these functions, possibly some additional ones as well, into a single instrument. Although not for high voltage industrial use, a multimeter like this can be purchased for less than $10, which will be good for low voltage electricity and electronics experiments. Before going into detail about our current measurements, it is important for you to have a clear idea of how current meters or ammeters are connected into circuits. This diagram shows a circuit with a battery connected in series with two resistors. To measure current with an ammeter, it must be connected in series so the current in the circuit will flow through the meter. What the ammeter measures is the amount of charge flowing through it per second in units of amperes, milliampers, or microampers. An ampere of current is one coulomb of electrons flowing through the wire every second. To measure the current in a circuit such as this simple light circuit, the circuit is opened at some point and the ammeter is connected across the break in the circuit. This places the ammeter in series so the electricity flows through it as well as the load, in this case a lamp. Ammeters have a low resistance so they don't change the current that they are trying to measure. This means there must be some resistance in the circuit to limit the current to a safe value. Never connect an ammeter or multimeter set to measure current directly across a source of electricity as that will create a short circuit and it will damage the meter or at least blow a fuse or circuit breaker. This series circuit is easily built using the protoboard in our electronics kit. Here it is built on the protoboard with two 10,000 ohm resistors connected in series. Your protoboard may look different but the layout will be similar. Remember the key to understanding protoboards is the metal strips under the protoboard that connect the groups of holes. The holes are usually in groups of five on the inside rows. Here you see the back of a protoboard with a cover removed so you can see the metal strips. The protoboard with a cover removed is sitting on top of another larger protoboard. 
Most protoboards also include long strips of holes along the sides for power. Most protoboards are designed to be snapped together to make larger boards. Think about the connections you would have to make to a circuit in order to cause the current you want to measure to flow through the meter. You would need to break the circuit so that the ammeter can be connected in series. In this picture, one end of a wire and one end of a resistor that were connected together have been pulled apart. This picture shows a multimeter connected in series. All the current flowing in the circuit must pass through the ammeter. Current meters are not supposed to alter the behavior of the circuit, or at least not significantly, and it follows that an ammeter must have a very low resistance. So again, be warned, the electricity must always flow through a sufficient resistance to limit the current. For most small multimeters, this would need to be at least 50 ohms. Now try to build this circuit yourself. Build the circuit first like this. Notice that the circuit in this picture is getting its supply of electricity from the power connections on the protoboard. This is like the circuit diagram. The strip along the bottom of the protoboard on the Radio Shack Learning Lab is the connection to ground or negative of the batteries. The connection for positive is along the top of the Learning Lab Kit protoboard. This protoboard is a little different from the one in the Learning Lab Kit. It has strips along the side for both positive and negative. If you are using a protoboard similar to this, you will want to make the power connections to those connection strips. Your circuit would look like this. Notice that the red wire coming off the top connects to the red positive strip and the blue wire coming off the top connects to the blue colored negative strip. For direct current circuits, red wires are often used for positive and black or blue are often used for negative or ground. The red and blue wires go to the battery or power supply. Here is the same circuit with a slightly different protoboard. It also has power strips along the sides but no colored stripes. Pause this video now and build this circuit on your protoboard. Please do not connect the power or the meter yet. Now that you have it connected, we can get prepare to measure the current. We must be careful when measuring current because it is easy to mess up current measurements. It is important to realize that because the resistance in a circuit is what controls and limits the current, there must be some resistance connected in series with the ammeter for, to prevent high current from damaging the meter. Again. Never connect your meter across a battery without a resistance to limit the current. No smoking allowed. Uh-uh. It is also important to make sure your meter is connected to the test probes correctly. Notice that the red test lead is plugged into the jack labeled MA fused. You have to move the red test lead to this jack for current measurements only. On most meters, for voltage and resistance measurements, the right jack is labeled with a V for volts. It is important to have the multimeter set on the correct current range. It is a good idea to start with a higher current range and turn it down to a lower range. In this case, we started with 200 milliamp range. We found a more accurate measurement when the meter was set to the 20 milliamp range. Double check your meter connection. Make sure it is not connected directly to the battery or power supply. Current should have to go through a resistance in some part of the circuit. A common mistake is to connect the current meter across resistors. This would be correct if you were measuring the voltage across the resistors, but for current it will short out the resistors making a low resistance path and may blow the meter's fuse. Now it is your turn. Build the circuit and measure the current flowing in the circuit. What do you measure? Pause the video here while you try it. Make note of your results. Next, try measuring the current in the same circuit with two resistors, but substitute 1000 ohms instead of 10,000. Remember, 1000 is also called 1K, brown, black, red, gold. Note your results. In the next part, we will see how to measure voltage.